This is Zeka. It is a roughly 250 page autobiographical Japanese book and it is written by a Japanese serial killer. So yeah, that was probably not much of a surprise to you considering the fact that you probably read uh, the title of this video, but um, yeah, this is uh, not only a book written by an actual Japanese serial killer, but it is one of the most infamous Japanese serial killers out there and is also considered one of the most banned books in the Japanese literacy world. Now, for those of you who are wondering how I got my hands on this book, uh, I didn't actually go to the bookstore to buy it uh, for a number of reasons. One, because it is practically impossible to buy this at bookstores anymore, considering that the book distribution or sales was disabled roughly a week or two after it opened up publication. And two, I did not want to support the author of this book for obvious reasons. So instead I opted to buying a resold version of this which cost about $10 just so people don't think I am trying to support a serial killer in buying this book because I am absolutely not. However in saying that I was very curious when I heard that this is one of the most banned and disturbing books ever written just based on the background of how this came to be. I, you know, the, the curiosity got the best of me. Curiosity killed the cat. But this cat uh, was determined to buy it and read it all the way through to get the full context to see just how disturbing this book actually is. Now, I don't want to do a full dive into the background of the author uh, because my girlfriend actually did a better job at that with her own video, which I will leave in the link in the description or the cards up there uh, that you can go check out as well. So I recommend you go check out that video first to get the full context of who this author actually is and what horrible things he did and then come back to this video. Okay, now that you all have hopefully caught up on who this guy is, uh, let me go into, I guess, the book review. So obviously the guy who wrote this is operating under an alias. He never reveals his real name, although there have been, again, some rumors of what his real name might be. At least in terms of the book, he calls himself Shonen A, or Child A, as that was the name that was used when the original double murders were broadcasted to the nation, uh, considering that he was underage. And so based on weird Japanese rules and restrictions about that kind of stuff, you're not allowed to publicly share the name of people under the age of 20, which I never understood, to be honest. But hey, at least unlike a lot of other serial killers out there in the West, his name will never be known. And so he doesn't get the spotlight as much as he got it. But essentially, what Zeka is, is not only an autobiographical retelling of what he was going through when he committed those two crimes, but also the aftermath of his experiences going to jail, going to juvenile, as well as the aftermath and I guess inner thoughts of how he felt going through everything and the message that he, the message quote unquote, that he wanted to portray at the end of this book. Bottom line, I finished all of it. It was definitely a disturbing novel for a number of reasons. Disturbing in the sense of the gruesome detail that he weirdly does and sometimes doesn't go into. I mean, he doesn't really go into the details of actually killing the two kids, but he does go into details of events that led up to the two murders. For example, there is an entire chapter in this book where he goes over how he killed his first animal, which is a, you know, if you've seen enough true crime videos, then you'll know that that is a very common trait amongst serial killers. It usually starts off with killing bugs, which then leads on to killing animals, which then leads on to, unfortunately, killing other humans. So there is this retelling that he portrays in uh, gruesome, unnecessary detail of how he kills his first animal, more specifically how he kills a cat. And I will spare you the details, but the gruesomeness is uh, definitely at its peak, weirdly, in that part of the book. At least in terms of the graphical details, because if there is one thing that I had to say about uh, this author that I ashamedly have to almost praise in a weird way is the fact that he's very very good at drawing out picturesque settings in the sense that he gets in a lot of senses very poetic and almost biblical 
in ways that he portrays not just certain mundane environments but certain mundane movements and thought processes which really do not need to be at such a weirdly poetic and picturesque level. Again I preface by saying that I do not support this author whatsoever. What he did was absolutely fucking horrible but just for the sake of the review and just for the sake of you know understanding how this book plays out that's how I had to say it so take that with a grain of salt. And I don't know if this is actually uh, him, the, the, the killer who wrote all of this by himself, maybe he got a ghostwriter, I'll never know. But bottom line is whoever wrote this, whoever had a hand in writing this book, definitely knows how to portray a story and definitely knows how to portray a picture in weirdly, again, poetic and picturesque ways. Even just a standard scene of him going back to the scene of the crime where he dumped the bodies of the two children and where he went to come and recollect the body parts again and the fact that uh, he it's in the middle of this forest, in this Japanese forest and then suddenly the moment he gets there the rain starts to pour down. There is an entire two or three page descriptive moment of him describing the rain and describing how he felt as the rain was pummeling down as he's scourging through his little hiding spot to come and pick up parts of uh, the two dead children. It is absolutely gruesome and horrendous, but also, again, weirdly poetic. And remember when I said that the, he weirdly leaves out a lot of details? Well, he purposely, I don't know if he purposely did this, but he purposefully left out details of how he actually killed his two victims. Maybe because that whole thing was already openly uh, published and uh, distributed at this, you know, at the time of the actual crime in 1997. You know, people, if you if you do one quick Wikipedia search, you know how this guy killed these two kids. So he weirdly doesn't actually describe what he did to those kids and how he felt when doing those horrible crimes. Maybe purposefully, maybe that was a way for him to say, I didn't feel anything. I felt empty. I, I did it on a whim, I did it and I, I don't remember me doing it, maybe that was because of a case of trauma and stuff like that. Again, he does it in a weird way where it leaves out details, but the fact that he leaves out the details is weirdly disturbing in its own way. I don't know, I feel that part was definitely left for interpretation in a lot of ways, but bottom line is that the lead up to the crimes and his family situations and how he, I guess, portrayed himself and how he portrayed other people during his childhood before the murders and up to, leading up to the murders is only one chapter of this book. If In fact, it is probably only covers about the first third of the book because from then on in he goes into detail about what happened uh, at the interrogation, what happened after he was finally convicted and arrested and sent to juvenile and all of the t trials and turmoils that he went through after he finally was let out of juvenile prison because in a fucked up weird way he didn't actually get a life sentence for these things which is you know a, a very big critique of the Japanese uh, legal system and justice system in and of itself but that's a can of worms I do not want to open in this video. In the second third of the book he talks about how he tried to get his life back together after spending the majority of his teenage years in juvenile prison and how the outside world and all of the, I guess, paranoia of people maybe figuring out who he is and what he actually did and the truth of him would ever leak out again and that would just cause more problems. Which I say in a kind of weirdly empathetic way, or at least the book tries to portray it in a weirdly empathetic way, but knowing the fact that this is a guy that killed two kids, and not just killed two kids, but like absolutely horrendously mutilated these two kids. I mean, again, I hope you watched the Aki's video, my girlfriend's video, or looked up a simple Wikipedia page on what this guy actually did to these kids. And after you read those or watch that, you will not feel a smidge of empathy or sympathy for this guy. Like, this guy deserves everything that he went through and all the trials and turmoils of him trying to get his life back together after he was came out of juvenile everything and all the hardships that he tries to i guess throw a victim card at in a weird way is another weirdly disturbing element of the book in my opinion it's the fact that he almost writes it out as if he doesn't feel any uh, s sorriness 
to what he actually did. Although he says it many, many times of how he regrets doing what he did, it's kind of too little too late, in my opinion. You can't just mutilate two kids in an absolutely horrendous way, like the way he did, and come out of juvenile being like, I, I'm sorry like that that's you can't you can't do that it's that's just not how it is and as a quick side note as well he never actually got any permission from the victims families before starting to write and publish this book and that might be a huge reason as to why it got banned instantly the moment it came into publication I'm sure there was some legal action that happened between uh, the author and the families of the victims and stuff like that to just get it off the shelf because this is exploitative media to the fucking T. Like, this is the, the definition of exploitative media. There is just this, like, weird sense of uh, playing the victim card in this book, which, again, I think is so disturbing conceptually. It's the fact that he almost isn't sorry, or rather, his, his inner thoughts, his, like, inner demons that made him do what he did is just not making him feel actually sorry for what he did. Although, his mouth will say it many, many times, and, and you know, he, he may think it, and he may write it down in this book of, what I did was a horrible thing, I'm sorry for what I did, I'm trying to get my life back together, but I know it's hard, and I'm not gonna whine and bitch and complain about trying to get the easy card and get life to spoon feed me, because it, life does not spoon feed people who do horrible things like this. And yet, as you're reading this part of the book, you realize, like, am I supposed to feel sorry for you? Why are you acting like the victim? Why do you not try to move forward or rather help the victim's families move forward from the horrible things that you did? The fact that he almost, you know, cuts complete ties with his family as well, even though his family was trying to support him even after what he did, which is, for one, something that I think a lot of families just, you know, struggle to do. But two, it's the fact that the one final straw that he had made him almost lose all hope of humanity and make him look like the victim is just uh, absurd and again, just conceptually disgusting. And then to top it all off, at the end of the book, he writes this apology letter to the victims' families and to the victims. And the final line of this book is, I'm sorry for what I did. And when I read that, it just pissed me off. You had the audacity to not only uh, write something like this in an exploitative manner, but the fact that you just say that you're sorry, like, you think that just by saying sorry at the end of this book, that it's okay to publish something like this, and it's okay to feel what you did and share all of the horrible things that you did, is just, I'm not even related or anything like that to the victims' families, but it makes me feel sympathy and empathy, not towards the killer, who is trying to pull sympathy and empathy from you in this book, but more towards the, the victims' families. I feel sorry for the victims' families after reading this book. This guy could have just disappeared and just never come back and resurface into the, the Japanese media. Even though throughout this book he was trying, he was saying that he was trying so hard to hide himself and to just live underneath the shade of the entire Japanese society to just like, I'm gonna keep living my life because I was only given one life and yes, I fucked it up and I was given another chance, and I'm gonna take this chance and take it to the fucking grave quietly and without getting anybody else involved. And yet by writing this book, you did the complete opposite of that. You basically said, you know what, people need to know about the, the, the hardships that I went through. People need to know about the truth of everything. And yet you very scarcely write about the truth. You, you very scarcely write about what exactly happened. The whole fact that he purposefully or accidentally just doesn't give any detail whatsoever about what he actually did to his two victims, and yet writes around all of this fluff in a weirdly poetic way and picturesque way about things that ultimately we shouldn't have to care about is what kind of made the reading this book a very like bittersweet feeling.
you know, I've reviewed a bunch of different media, anime, manga, music, all that kind of stuff in the past, and people can have opinions about lots of different things, but the one thing, no matter how much I might hate a certain piece of art, uh, one thing I will never say towards that art is, this thing should have never existed. I, I would never say anything like that, because all art deserves to exist, regardless of whether you personally enjoy it or not. But this, honestly, this book might be the first time where I take back that statement. This book truly did not need to exist. It is just a disturbing retelling that brushes over uh, important details that people wanted to know and people needed to know, and then manages to throw a victim card upon itself to be like, I hope, you know, you feel sorry for me because I don't feel sorry for myself, and then ending it off with a, I hope that this book teaches people not to do what I ended up doing and to live a, a, a good life, where everybody knows who's watched enough true crime will know that's not how this kind of stuff works. If anything, by publishing this book and promoting yourself out into the Japanese society once again, it's only going to get people to potentially fucked up individuals to look up to people like this and go, oh, this is kind of cool. This kind of humanizes a serial killer. You know, he could just be like any one of us, which is the complete opposite of the message that this book was trying to portray. Like, this book is written uh, according to the author. I want to share my story because I don't want people to go through exactly how I went through. But uh, if you guys know anything about, you know, people who look up to things like serial killers and murderers, which, for one, I... 1 million percent condemn, I think people like that are absolutely fucking stupid. This kind of exploitative media does not help that notion whatsoever. It is doing the exact opposite. This is the kind of books that people read, that mentally unstable, people who are, you know, idolized serial killers read, that go, all right, this is the Bible. This is the book that I need to read in order to be just like my favorite serial killer. And that is... The reason why this book should have probably never existed in the first place. You know, truth be told, this is the first time I've read any kind of, like, true, like, kind of exploitative book media like this. It is fascinating. To, it was a fascinating read, no doubt about that. But was it a necessary read? Absolutely not. This is not a book that I would recommend to anybody, and thankfully there is no English translation of this, because I did not feel good after reading this book. Of course, I knew what I was going to get into, but it even exceeded my expectations of that. So that was my review of Zeka uh, by Moto Shone E, uh, one of the most banned books in Japan, written by a Japanese serial killer. I'm not going to give it a score or anything. I just wanted to, I guess, share my experiences of reading a, a book like this because I don't know of many people who have read books like this, and I'm kind of glad, because no one ha should have to go through what I just read in this book. This book definitely deserves to be ranked as one of the most banned books in Japan, because uh, it should definitely stay that way. And now that I have finished this book, and I have filmed this video sharing my thoughts, I think the right thing to do, at least just to put myself at ease, is that I'm going to dispose of this book. I don't want to hold on to it, if I'm being honest. I don't want other people to read it. Uh, if I would burn this book if I could, but um, yeah, either way, I'm not going to be reselling this book. I'm going to tear it up, throw it in the trash, because this is a piece of media that truly should not exist. There you go. Uh, that was a bit of a <laughs> different video that I normally do, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below, and please, again, don't, don't get this. Don't get this book. I am literally going to burn this book after I'm done with this video. If there are any other review type of stuff that you would like me to do, let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smack my face right there to subscribe to the channel. Let's keep making big channel number go bigger. Over here next to my head is a couple more videos you can check out if you enjoyed this one. Links to all my social media, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, TikTok, and YouTube shorts down in the description below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.